Welcome everyone to another trailer to film. This is where I take three scenes from the trailer and talk about its impact and if it holds up conveying the same excitement within the film as it did the trailer. And here we are going to be talking about the upside. So I'd like to state for the record that I'm a sentimental bastard that loves feel-good movies. That means I really could care less if it was a cliched romp of talented people not using what they were made for. It's good to see people try something new and different for themselves, and I'll always support that. I have really got to say that I have not seen a good sentimental film in a while. The last one I saw was actually back in 2006 called The Pursuit of Happiness, and that was with Will Smith. And I loved it so much, I even bought the soundtrack. So a funny story, or a, a coincidental one around this film, The Upside, is that I actually had no idea this was a remake. <laughs> Generally, I... <laughs> I don't go for remakes because I hate to love something that had something before it. It kind of makes me feel a little shallow. Anyway, the, the idea is I found this composer and musician by the name of Lu Ludovicio Inaudi. If I said his name wrong, I am so sorry. But I, I heard his music through a Doctor Who video. And the link to that video and the person's channel down below. So I explored this artist. And some of his songs that I came across uh, became some of my favorites. I absolutely love this composer. He is really, really talented. But in that time, I saw this image. And, I mean, I didn't look heavily into it. I uh, just kind of saw the two faces. And I thought, you know what? These are probably the composers to the music. And, oh, one of them has happened to be like probably like a guest to the person's music. I, I did not do any thorough research, it was just on the fly. As I say about myself a lot, I'm an idiot. Anyway, fast forward to The Upside coming out. It was reviewed by a few people, and it was explained that there was a film before it called The Untouchables. Seeing the cover, I then went, really? Then I saw the credit to the musician, and it just put a smile on my face. Ludovicio himself. And he was the one that composed the Untouchables movie. Ain't that something? Little things like that kind of make me happy. I love making small connections. And while this story is just a mere fragment in coincidence, I'm just talking about the upside, the movie itself, for what it is and what it's worth. So The Upside was a film I had very little desire to see. I thought it looked predictable and cliche, despite having Brian Cranston and Kevin Hart at the helm. But there was a desire nonetheless. So a buddy of mine, Joe, wanted to see it and, well, I said sure why not. So here we are. I walked out of that film pleasantly surprised and I was actually kind of happy that I saw the film, albeit late, but seen nonetheless. Okay, so I've kept you long enough. From trailer to film, let's get into this. So this is the first scene that reached out to me. Have you ever changed a catheter? No. Pinch the head, insert. Mm. I can't feel it. Oh, well I can. All right, so the catheter scene was actually a great setup for a future scene the movie had, and I just found it absolutely hilarious. Everything is implied and nothing is seen, just dialogue between the two that starts with this scene. And there are plenty of scenes like that that, don't, that doesn't really go over the top. And it executes some decent, if not good, moments of comedy. This is also where the film finds a good blend between the feeling real and down to earth to silly and inspirational organically within the scenes and situations. Moving on to the second scene. Are you mad? You want to break this big ass bottle of wine? Yeah! Ah! What else you want to do? The ball. <laughs> biggest scene I was looking forward to because I, I just I like those moments where you know you're, you're you're losing your cool and yet you're actually losing your cool at the right time where someone actually matches you halfway and then it just forms a bond the great thing about the scene while it was short and it kind of gives you everything of what does happen in that moment it doesn't feel forced you know like yes you see it coming to which of course adds to the predictability sometimes movies are just kind of like that and we'll We'll get into predictability in a second, but the scene itself has a little more to it that actually has a hilarious punchline within it just before this scene happens. Dell made a mess. Good stuff. So this next, this third scene in the trailer is kind of tricky. It's just a brief moment in the trailer, but it's after the scene that we're talking about. Here you go. 
this scene I was just sort of tickled by. Yeah, he's kind of just doing his hands like that. He's he's actually commanding um <laughs> he's commanding two or four opera singers in that moment, but uh Kevin Hart has always struck me as a straightforward guy when playing these roles. He likes what he likes, says what he says, and does what he does best. Be funny. But here, that scene adds a wonderful depth to Kevin Hart and his character. To see him command the singers uh, because he wanted to hear the music he was just now getting into because of Brian Cranston's character, which was opera, he really added something humbling to the whole idea of Kevin Hart. He could be grounded and have a range of acting to his credit. And I loved that moment to, with him. And hell, I just, I really enjoyed his character a whole hell of a lot. I mean, that goes without saying, Nicole Kidman and Brian Cranston, they are excellent in this film. But as I said, in the matter of predictability, the movie is... Of course, a paint by numbers. And once in a while, from here into the foreseeable future, you'll hear me complain about how something is predictable as a negative critique, while other times you might hear me say it's predictable, but who the hell cares? Sometimes when things are going organically, it feels a lot more earned than you would imagine. So like from the events of A to B to C are coming a mile away, it's really a matter of how you tell the story. You could literally recite the alphabet to someone and you know they're gonna reach Z, but what keeps you listening? It's how they recite it. For instance, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. And you might be wondering, what happened to the P? Well, I really had to go to the bathroom, so it's already down my pants. Some kindergarten humor for you, but that's my point. Sometimes it's predictable and not well garnered or executed. Other times, scenes reach the inevitable of what you see coming, but it works for what it is. For that, I loved The Upside and would own it on DVD. In fact, I'd probably go out and find the original and watch it as well. Let it be known that Hollywood did its job for the first time for me and turned me on to its original maker. All right, so The Upside, what did you think of it? I'd love to talk to you about it. If you have a second, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment sections. Be kind, be reasonable, and let's talk. Thank you all so much for watching. If you're new here, I do movie and TV show reviews. Check those out if you are interested. Follow me on Twitter for updates and thoughts on various matters, and I hope you all have a fantastic and wonderful day. Don't forget to like, comment, and... <laughs>